Hello, welcome to Museum Moments. Uh, this is a project of the Jewish Museum Milwaukee. My name is Ellie Gettinger. I'm the Education Director at Jewish Museum Milwaukee, and I am delighted to be with you on this Friday. Today, we are going to share the story of one of my favorite things in the museum. Uh, literally every group that we have coming in, I like to uh, start out with this piece. Um, and generally, I start out by uh, saying, what do you guys see in here? But today we're gonna start out with the history and then we'll get to actually what Chagall saw in it. So as we're looking at our fabulous Chagall tapestry, I want you to consider uh, what you see in this piece and why you think it's special and important. Um, so without further ado, here, is the Chagall Tapestry. Now, I have recognized, having done this now with several virtual field trips and a number of different groups, that the internet does not actually hold the grandeur of this piece. Because what we're looking at on our tiny screens, our phones, our laptops, our tablets, does not really give you the sense of a 14 by 19 foot hand-woven piece of art. Um, but for the sake of what we have here, this is the piece that we're talking about today. The name of the piece is the Prophet Jeremiah, and it was the first Chagall tapestry to come to the United States. And I wanna give you a little background on how it got here. So it starts with the couple that you see flanking Mark Chagall here. Uh, the gentleman, uh, his name is Ollie Edelman, and his wife Edie were part of uh, the group of people who were building a new Milwaukee Jewish Federation building in Milwaukee. And Ollie always liked to do things a little bit more than. For instance, his house was actually designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, and he had this vision that he wanted to, and he had, he had worked with all of these people to get them involved in the project. The project was primarily funded by a guy named Evan Helfer, who we'll talk about a little bit later. But Ollie saw this vision of this project and said, we need something big. We need a big piece of public art, something that says we've arrived. And so he, through a number of channels, is able to get Mark Chagall's uh, phone number. And he has his wife, call up Mark Chagall. She had taken um, she had taken French in high school and Vava Chagall, Mark Chagall's second wife, was a Russian native speaker, but could do French as well. And somehow through the course of this conversation, they were able to come to an agreement. Um, and, and it comes out, and actually this is the first time I've ever used this contract. This is the contract that Chagall uh, utilized. And I don't know if you guys can read it on your tiny devices, but you can see it says it's about 200,000 francs that the project is going to cost. That's how much they're paying Chagall. I have since learned that in American dollars, 200,000 francs sounds like a lot of money, but it's actually only about $45,000. Um, $45,000 seems like a bargain for an original piece of Chagall artwork. In today's terms, I think all of us would be like, yes, that's an investment you should make. The project then is turned over to a trusted associate of Mark Chagall. And one thing that I've learned in, we've done two Mark Chagall exhibits um, and that he has, he, we've done a, a series on etchings. We've done a piece on lithographs and he kind of, works with these artisans and craftspeople that become his trusted, you know, right hands to become the people who he believes understands how to translate his work into that medium. And so in this case, he works with a woman named Madame Yvette Conqui Prince. I'm not going to attempt the French. Oh, actually, before we get to that, this is the guy who funded both the building that the Federation is located in, the Hellfair Community Services Building, and the tapestry itself, he ran a um, chemical company. And at some point, there is a museum moment in on this because this name, Hellfair, is one you see all over Milwaukee. So stay tuned, folks. It's coming. So this is Madame Yvette Conkey Prince. And you can see the drawing that Chagall that she's working off of. It is no bigger than my laptop screen, I don't think. And yet, she is taking this tiny piece and she's creating this grand scale. The process is complicated. She takes his original gouache, she enlarges it, 
to the size that our tapestry is, 14 by 19 feet, reverses all the images. And for every color that you see in the tapestry, she assigns a number to it. Um, and, you know, they, and the number then is associated with the color. So for everybody right now who is painting by number, I know there are a lot of you, just imagine if you're weaving by number. And just to give you a sense of what that looks like, look at the number of skeins of yarn in front of this craftsperson. Most of the craftspeople were from uh, Morocco or Tunisia. Um, and they were really marvelous workmen and women. And the thing that I think is most interesting is that as they were working on this piece, they never actually could see what they were working on. They had to just, uh, they had to just keep going uh, because they were working from the back and they were working upside down. And it wasn't until the entire piece was finished that they got to see it all together. Um, but I just, I'm in awe of being able to keep it organized, how many different types of thread uh, she is working with there. Um, by the way, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And uh, and I'm, I agree with you, Annette, that amount is a steal. <laughs> so, the tapestry is unveiled. It takes about nine months for it to be finished. And it's unveiled. This is how it lived in the Milwaukee Jewish Federation for many years. When I started working at the Federation in 2003, this is what it looked like. This is where you walked in. And it had this kind of grand moment on the far wall. But one thing that you'll note from this picture, and you'll see why we moved it, is if you look at those skylights up top, that there is a fair amount of natural sunlight that hits that piece of art. The other thing that we found uh, that my archivist Jay Highland pulled for me today was this is actually the dedication ceremonies of the Hellfair building. And it is clear, it says, dedication ceremonies of the Hellfair building, the Milwaukee Jewish Federation and community services agencies at that time, JFS and I believe BBYO were in the building as well. The unveiling of the Chagall tapestry created especially for this new building. Community and national leaders will join uh, with personal friends to honor Evan Hellfair on Sunday. So this is, it unveils in the community um, on the 29th of April. So we're right around its anniversary as well. Um, and this is in 1973. Now this is a fascinating catch, a new piece of information that emerged that we knew about, but I hadn't been using in a long time. And it had always been one of these things that in Ali Edelman's book, he says, no, no, and I, and I convinced Chagall that he should give his money back. You know, it's $45,000 for this tapestry, but I convinced him he should make a donation. And here is an article that says Chagall gives $45,000 to the Milwaukee Israel Emergency Fund. This is in 1973. This is right after, um, this is in the midst of all of sorts of, I think it's right before the Yom Kippur War. And interestingly, they make this donation to the Jerusalem Foundation um, and they are giving this in particular to educational programs for Jewish and Arab children in Jerusalem, which I was like, this is a pretty exciting new addition to my explanation of the Chagall tapestry. Here is showing some images of the tapestry being installed. You get a real sense of how big it is. And this is it again. So let's go back to that question of what do you see in this tapestry? Here is how Chagall describes it. He says, the image of the prophet tells the history of the chosen people of God. And in the pages are written the prophecies of peace, of wisdom, and of the comprehension between all the peoples of the earth for the future. The red bird symbolizes the joy and hope, and he seems to sing the song of songs. The color of the red of the color red of the bird makes the allusion to the long suffering of the Jewish people and their travels through the centuries of their sacrifices of their and of their innocence. In the painting, in painting the woman, I have thought of the woman of the Bible, of Madame Golda Meir, and of all the valiant women of her on earth. In depicting the other woman, my thoughts go to Madame Hellfair. So here he is tipping his hat to the patron. The blue represents the color of hope and the new Israel. The other bird, the blue, symbolizes the hope of life, of truth, and of good fortune for all humanity. The moon, in another era in my life, permitted us to dream of a better future. So 
I adore this piece. I think it's a magical addition to the museum. I love being able to explore it with students. One of my favorite things ever came from a kid from Goldemeyer School the first year we opened. And he looked at this red bird and this blue bird and he said, the red bird is falling out of the sky and the blue bird is flying. And if that doesn't describe this question of sacrifice and suffering versus hope and the promise of a better future, I don't know what does. I hope that you'll all come and check out this tapestry in person because as I said, it, the, my, my screen here doesn't do it justice. And when we reopen, you'll know just a little bit more. And I'm just so excited to have this confirmation about uh, Chagall giving his tapestry, his commission back. By the way, I think the overall cost of the project was about $125,000. So it took about $80,000 $80, between commissioning um, Yvette Kanki prints, the materials, the shipping, all of the other pieces of this. Um, and it was part of the larger 1.25 million uh, Jewish Federation project. So a lot of big numbers there. We love this piece and we love being able to share it. And thank you all for sharing this kind of Shabbati um, museum moment with us. Next week, we're gonna have a guest, or actually, Molly Dubin is going to be presenting on Wisconsin Jewish artists. And I'm so excited that Molly's gonna be able to share these stories with you. So get ready for some new energy, some new insight, and we'll see you again, two o'clock, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. If you've liked these or any of our museum moments, please feel free to make a donation at jewishmuseummilwaukee.org. We appreciate it. Thanks and have a great day.